Well, this is uh, five spontaneous minutes uh, on the subject of uh, non-binding ballot referendums and first installment on this subject. Um, this is like a no harm, no foul kind of thing. Should, I, why isn't? Why doesn't it already exist? I mean, you say, well, why shouldn't the public be allowed to participate uh, in the process and write some legislation? And then, and, you know, legislature can vote it up and down or do as they choose to it, but at least the public can have a voice. They can make their opinion known. And there's so many mechanisms, so many ways to do it. Um, a, a proposal I've promoted uh, would uh, would allow anybody to you know pay a modest fee, twenty dollars, whatever, to register an ordinance, a law, a, a proposition uh, with the government, and they would be given a code number. And then uh, on, in primary elections, uh, there'd be a slot on your ballot to write in the number that of the of the you know, ballot proposition you like, they'd all be online and indexed and you could choose the best worded one and the best one on the subject or whatever, the one that says what you want to say. And whatever one gets the most votes would uh, be on the ballot as a, as a referendum uh, in the next election. Uh, it makes perfectly good sense. Uh, it's just, like I said, what's, what's the downside? There isn't any. Uh, you know, except the politicians want to keep control. They don't. They don't want, you know, the public to be participants, and they don't want. Uh, they really don't want high voter turnout because they want to control who votes, and, and that's what really the bottom line is. You know, you can enhance, you can increase voter participation by having referendums on the ballot. It's proven fact. I mean, yeah, they bring people out, and the more of them you have, the more power you give for people to say something what they want to say. You know, I mean, referendum on some. No, or should we borrow three million dollars to do X, Y, Z? You know, people don't pay any attention to that. But you give them a, a you know, abortion referendum or some other thing, they can, they can, they can feel empowered, you know, to be, make a statement by by voting for it. Yeah, that's right. You're going to get them to the polling booth, you know, and so you're actually going to have most people voting in America for a change, and and that's what the politicians don't want because they, they don't want all those disaffected voters voting because they know they're disaffected because they can't stand the two parties. And, 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 and that's the bottom line. This is more two-party suppression of we the people. And the sooner we get rid of these two, this two-party lock system, the better. Because the, that's, the, this is, we're not getting anywhere. You know, our democracy is, is stalled and stagnant. And we need to do something you know, to stimulate it. And this is just so simple. It didn't cost anything. I mean, you know, m modest cost. You know, I irrelevant cost when you think of things. And it just, it, there's, there's no downside. There's nothing negative here. If you believe in we the people, if you believe that voices should be heard, you know, because they would be. You know, the press could tell us what the two of the top ten vote-getting propositions were. People would see it right there clear. That's public opinion, opinion that counts. Not public opinion CNN tells us or Fox News tells us, but public opinion that's actually real, that has some sort of meaning, okay? You know, no, no people voting twice, none of that stuff. So elections are a nice, uh, reliable source of information, and we would get some information from those elections. So, well, anyway, it's, it's something that really should be done. Uh, I don't know why there's, there's you know, no grassroots energy to get it done, but it really should happen.